right, it's Henry again, and this is probably going to be my one and only work in progress video for this kit. This is the 1 to 100 scale high grade Wing Gundam. And uh, this is an older kit from 1995, so lots of seam lines. That's actually what I'm in the process of doing right now. Uh, I've already cemented all the seam lines, and now I'm uh, using some putty to kind of fill in any gaps and things where might need a little bit of repair work. Also, we got like some of these little ejector pin marks, little circular indentations that you may notice. Uh, most of the time they're on the undersides of parts, like up under here, but occasionally when you've got a part that's uh, a solid piece that's two uh, sides, you'll see the ejector pin marks on one side, but not on the other, so cleaning those up, uh, sanding, I used purple power on the gold parts, and oddly enough it didn't take all of the gold off, it only took about half of it off, so I've been sanding on the gold parts as well, uh, not gonna try to get 100% of the gold off, because if it's sanded smooth, I should be able to paint over it, and it'll be fine, uh, the primer should cover that up pretty well, so lots of a uh, lot more seam lines on this kit than there were on the Death Scythe Hell and Ultron I did last year, so a bit more work on this kit. So uh, gonna finish up cleaning here and then get a layer of primer on everything. <laughs> So got a nice solid coat of primer on the entire kit. It's something I usually don't show off is uh, the kit primered up because usually I just go straight from primer to painting. I don't really bother to assemble the kit after priming it. Priming it. But uh, anyway, here we go. It's actually a pretty good looking sculpt. Very chunky, very 90s, a lot bulkier than the more modern interpretation. So. Some of you like that, some of you don't, but anyway, and this is a commission kit, uh, again, so I'm painting this up for someone. This is, uh, I didn't do an unboxing video on this, because I actually got this second hand from, uh, Ed over at Double O Gunner Reviews, and he had given me the kit. It's complete, and everything's fine with it, just didn't have the box, so no unboxing video for this particular kit, but that's okay, because... Oh, there's probably been at least two dozen unboxing videos of this kit on YouTube already. So, now I'm going to take everything apart and get to painting. Just going to stick with the standard colors on this kit.
brushing is done and now I'm in the middle of removing all this masking tape there was a ton of masking on this kit as you can see from this giant stack of masking tape here uh, a lot more masking than the Death Scythe Helen Ultron I did but good practice so I mean even though I've been doing this for almost 20 years you can never even I find that I still make mistakes with uh, masking so it's something that I am probably always going to need practice at so it's good to get some exercise in with masking just slowly getting better little by little a lot of the reason why there was so much masking on this kit was because there were so so many seam lines like the shoulder armor for example there's a seam line on the blue part and the white part and there's no way like I tried I clipped the pegs off the blue part and tried to slide it onto the white part there's no way I could have done it without completely scratching up the paint so I literally had to assemble it like this fix the seam lines and then I painted this white part first, masked it off, painted the blue part, masked that off, and then painted this white part. So it ended, ended up looking something like this. And I removed the masking tape to finally reveal the uh, finished part. So a whole bunch of work going into painting this kit, a lot more than I anticipated like I knew it was an older kit and I knew I was gonna have to do a lot of masking I just didn't realize I was gonna have to do this much masking so but it's all over now and now I can move on to the final few steps of the finishing process okay and I'm now in the process of panel lining just doing a uh, Kind of a rough panel line wash on this kit. I'm not doing all over wash because I am going to do a little bit of weathering, but I'm not going to do it very uh, heavy at all. Just a little bit of chipping here and there, maybe a few little streaks and rust uh, rust stains. Nothing too big, nothing too major. Just doing a quick pass with the wash like so. And here the other wing, I've already put the wash on this one, let that dry for a few minutes. Now I can just wipe that away. Get some nice looking panel lines there. The camera's will, the camera will focus on it because my camera is literally the worst ever. Anyway, you get the point. So there we go. Get into those little nooks and crannies and crevices. process of doing the decals uh, just doing some kind of minimalistic decals on this guy not I don't want to overwhelm it with decals because this being an older kit I want to keep the build looking kind of simple so just a few caution markings here and there And I'm using uh, these. These are from uh, HQ Parts. These are just their 1 to 100 water slide caution marking decals. 
pretty generic looking stuff, but uh, really, really well printed and really nice looking decals. Also, for the white parts, I'm using the red sheet. Okay, so I am doing a little bit of chipping on this kit. Uh, I'm not doing any brush chipping at all. I want to keep the uh, chip details, I guess would be the word, relatively small. So I am just using a sponge, doing sponge chipping. I'm not even chipping in the open areas. I'm just going along the edges in places that are going to have high contact with other parts, like where these two these uh, wings meet, for example, the red and the white wing. There's going to be a lot of friction there, a lot of paint being chipped off, so that's where I'm putting chipping right there. Go ahead and repeat that on the other side. And the sponge I'm using is pretty flat on one side, as you can see, and that's really helping me keep the chipping right on the edge because just the edge of the part is going to touch the sponge since it's got that flat edge on it. Okay, very last thing I'm doing before top coat is a little bit of streaking. Uh, just doing some rust stains with the real touch marker here. I've got the brown marker. Just put a little dab going with a Q-tip and pull down. It just makes a really quick, efficient little rust streak. Just so that there's something, some more weathering on here besides just chipping. Since I'm not doing oils or anything with this kit. Wanted it to be more than just sponge chipping, so adding some rusty streaks on here. And if they get a little bit too intense, I can just continue to blend those with the Q-tip until they get as subtle as I want them to be. Add some up here on the red as well. So, doing that pretty much all over the kit. Done some on the legs here, uh, feet, skirt armor. Did some uh, with the black real touch and did some soot stains on these vents on the front skirts. everything top coated and ready for final assembly. Good thing about these older high grades is that uh, you can do top coating pretty quick because unlike a master grade uh, all the sub assemblies are just big chunks. So I was able to do top coating in probably about 20 minutes. Anyway, uh, this was an enjoyable build. Uh, I think this is the third time? No, fourth time. Fourth time I've built this particular kit, the 1 to 100 high grade wing Gundam. I really like the older 90s kits. Um, they, they do look very, very toy like and very primitive if you just snap them together and even just give them panel line with a Gundam marker. But if you really take the time to fill in the panel lines and uh, fill, in, fill in the seam lines, fix the seams, and uh, 
do all the masking necessary and give it a really nice paint job. Don't even have to do any weathering, but uh, that does add a little bit of extra oomph to it. But uh, even just fixing the seams and giving it a really good paint job can make these 90s kits look really, really good. And a lot of the 90s Gunpla, most of the 90s Gunpla, have a lot of panel lines and details on them. So it's uh, for people who like detailing stuff like that, it can be really fun. And uh, lots of panel lines and stuff like that make for good weathering as well. So that's also a fun little bit that adds to the experience. Only thing I don't like about 90s kits is how Bandai was stuck on these polycap elbow joints. Uh, and the 1144 scale ones had polycap hands. Those were also pretty awful. I painted the polycaps. A lot of people ask me uh, what I do for, oh, the, the paint keeps flaking off my polycaps. Uh, paint doesn't stick to polycaps very well, like, period. They're, even if you prime it, really no amount of prep work is going to keep the paint from flaking off. I mean, it'll stay on, but once you start messing with the polycap, that paint is immediately going to start flaking off little by little. And there's really not a whole lot you can do about it. So, uh your best bet is to uh, honestly just like replace the polycaps with plastic that would be my only real suggestion uh, in terms of a solution to that problem so uh, yeah but really good looking kit um, it does look very very nice in terms of uh, just it, it has a certain look to it. For people who like bulkier proportions and a lot of panel lines and details, it's actually a really good kit. Um, it's one of the better Gundam Wing uh, kits from the 90s, in my opinion. And uh, my favorite Wing Gundam is still the Master Grade. I love the Master Grade Wing Gundam to death, but this one does have its own unique charm to it, and it has it just has a really nice vintage. 90s look and feel. Uh, in terms of the color scheme, I stuck with the anime colors. This was a commission kit, uh, and the person who commissioned me to do it uh, wanted me to use a combination of yellow and gold, kind of like on the robot Damashi Gundam Wing figures. If you've seen those, they have a combination of yellow parts and gold parts. So I did gold for the chest vents and the circles on the shoulder armor, and then the uh, underside of the Buster rifle there and then yellow for everything else, like the V-fan and the wings and the claws on the arms and around the search eye. And then weathering came out good. Uh, not like, obviously didn't put a ton of effort into the weathering, like with oils and uh, all that kind of stuff, but just some simple weathering. I didn't want to make it look too awfully battle damaged, just like some uh, scuffed up paint, just kind of generally all over it as if it's been in battle a few times. Uh, some rust stains as if it's been left out in the rain because you know in Gundam Wing they very rarely used hangers they most of the time just left their Gundams out in the open in the woods with a camo net over it so that about does it for this work in progress video pretty happy with how this guy turned out and with that I'll see you guys next time <laughs>